Kyle Mohan Racing. We're in the shop. I happen to have a full bridge FD3S turbo motor coming through. Um, I'm just doing the assembly work, but it's a very cool motor, probably horsepower range somewhere in the, the 600 to 800 horsepower, fully studded, lightweight rotors. I didn't do the porting, but the porting's based off that KMR full bridge template. And I have the opportunity to show this motor. So that's what we're doing. KMR Tech Talk Rotary Talks FD3S full bridge going down. So you can see we've uh, put in a brand new multi-window bearing. I also polished the top of this gear face. I like to remove the stress risers. And uh, whoever did the porting, I think this came through uh, DNA. Uh, they did a nice job and uh, it's got really nice ramping to that bridge. One of the reasons I like the uh, template we offer is it does not cut the water seal, so you get very aggressive opening timing. Sounds great, great horsepower, um, but you still get reliability. Uh, they did a very nice job on the exhaust porting. I think that's uh, DNA, John Kepler, um, really good guys over there. You see they moved the exhaust port timing down, um, which is what you really do want to do on a, a turbo motor, especially one that's going to have overlap because of the uh, the full bridge being on both sides. Um, I probably would have uh, lapped these plates. You can see there's a little bit of water, uh, you know, just marking there, but uh, they're still in great condition, and uh, I didn't get to make all the calls on this. So, yeah, it's going to be a great motor. There's just a little information about it, and we'll continue on. So we just dropped the eccentric shaft in, rotor in. Everything's looking good. Uh, lightened FD3S rotors, new oil control ring, side seals. Side seals are cut to uh, 1.5 thou. And you can kind of see what the port looks like down in there. Um, again, this is uh, looks like it's based off the KMR template. I didn't personally do the porting. I'm just assembling it for a, uh, a friend's shop. But it's looking good. We'll keep working on it. Hi Lamar on all of the O-rings, uh, OEM gaskets. It's going to be a good motor. Dropped our rotor housing on, center plate, making progress. You can see the primary port is still a smaller port with a smaller bridge. Uh, we're trying to keep air velocity up. Even though it is a full bridge port, this isn't as big as those traditional NA bridge ports. And uh, the whole idea is to still maintain some mid-range, even though a bridge port is more of a top-end motor. And yeah, they sound awesome. So, we're going to drop our rotor in. Uh, we've been high lamaring all of our dowel pin O-rings, factory uh, water O-rings, and uh, the build is looking good and coming along. So, we just dropped our rear rotor in, and uh, this uh, rotating assembly has been balanced, lightened, and uh, side clearanced by Mazda Trix. And... Uh, for a full bridge or a half bridge or anything that's performance related, I would definitely recommend the balancing first and foremost, um, and then lightening, and obviously if you're going to go above stock RPM or run excessive boost above stock, then side cutting. Those are three really, imp really important traditional uh, rotor modifications that have been around for a long time. And then with the Mazda tricks, whenever we're doing balancing, we're always asking what apex seals you're going to run. If they're ceramic, steel, carbon, uh, different manufacturers have different weights, uh, two millimeter or three millimeter. So we actually calculate the weight of what you're running into the rotating assembly. Proper balancing by Mazda tricks. And this one, we're uh, using Ionetti two piece steel seals. I've heard good things about them, and it's going to be a good build. All right, so we've started screwing in our aftermarket oversized studs. This is a great way to strengthen the block. Um, there shouldn't be any real friction when you're screwing your studs down in if it's done properly. And there should be very minimal tolerance. It should not be a loose fit. So you shouldn't have friction or difficulty, and it shouldn't be loose. The stud is gusseting the block. The studs help limit twist expansion, uh, boost flex, RPM flex. It's one of my favorite modifications for a motor that will see high RPM, high boost, 
It'll stop your end plates from cracking as long as it's not uh, you know, something obscure like really aggressive detonation related. Um, but essentially, this is one of the best aftermarket options for adding strength to an existing rotary motor. Whether it's a two-rotor, three-rotor, four-rotor, studs are the best way. I prefer them over doweling. I prefer them over solid uh, uh, oil uh, dowel pins. Um, I prefer to leave the oil system alone, machine the block, add the strength, because that stops twisting, flexing, boost expansion, all of the things you're really worried about. It doesn't really matter whether you're NA or boosted. Um, it's really a good option. I prefer oversized versus the uh, OEM size. And one of the reasons would be is right here you can see this hole wasn't even on center from the factory. We use a jig on an upright mill with carbide end mills here at KMR Mazda Tricks. So not only are we accurate all the time, but we can duplicate these parts if you ever need a replacement. I should do a tech talk on studding. There's actually some really interesting stuff about it. But uh, yeah, next piece. End plate goes on. Uh, we're lubed up. And I got a couple more studs to put in, but I was feeling talky. There you go. We dropped our rear housing on, finished up our hardware. Uh, traditional Mazda torquing pattern, five pound increments, bringing it up to our torque spec. New rear main seal, polished bearing, all the good stuff. Time to build the front end. So we're getting our front end assembly together, and I just wanted to point out Mazda Tricks had to do some significant uh, balancing work to this engine, even though uh, they were factory uh, rotating assembly, supposedly. Uh, with the rotors lightened, they had to add a decent amount of material, you can see right there, to this front counterweight to make the proper balance achieved between the front counterweight rear rotor and vice versa. We'll do a, a balancing tech talk in the future, but this motor was probably going to be a shaker, and, and now it's going to run glass smooth. All right, stacked up our front stack. We're on our way to check in front end play, and I got the rear keyway in the back end because we're dropping our counterweight on, rear counterweight, and uh, just like the front, this one's had material added to one side and looks like material removed from the other side. So there was a lot of balancing work that went into this uh, particular motor. Balancing is important. So setting up front end play, you want to stack your full stack and torque down the front main pulley uh, bolt to proper specs. And we want to land somewhere around 2,000, depending on the build and what it's going to do. Um, Mazda speed specs 1.7 thou to 2.5 thou. That's a good range. I prefer that over the OEM specs, which are a little looser. Hey, we're looking at about 2.2. Perfect. We're going to leave it and uh, finish this motor up. Now I'll do a final cleanup on these components. Um, and then we're putting in our Mazda Trix 11 dash plug, which eliminates the thermostat. Just a good recommendation. And then we'll be able to put our front cover on with a Teflon O ring, metal uh, gasket, uh, good stuff from Mazda Trix. So now we've got our oil pump and uh, oil pump drive set up on there. Everything's torqued down, lock washer is locked, and we'll be able to set up our seals and drop that front cover on. So there you have it with our uh, front pulley uh, torqued down, front cover on. We can rotate it on our handy uh, Mazda Trix engine stand. And you've got a built full bridge FD3S turbo with lightweight rotors, side cutting, balancing, and a whole bunch of good stuff going on. Um, this is a motor I would definitely uh, be happy to run in any of my cars. Um, I'm wrapping it up here. I think DNA is going to do the install, put the oil pan on, and a couple last things. But I thought it was a pretty cool build. You don't see uh, full bridge FD motors as regularly as some others. And I look forward to hearing this on the dyno and seeing how it goes. Uh, rumor is they're aiming for something over 700. So should be easy. Done it before. Make sure to follow Kyle Mohan Racing. Uh, make sure to say hello, ask questions. We're going to be doing some uh, 
answer fan questions really soon on this YouTube channel, and we really appreciate everybody enjoying our video content. KMR. I almost forgot the most important part, what everybody's been waiting for.